We think you should know that Imperfect Heroes Podcast is a production of Little Hearts Academy USA. Welcome, heroes and heroines, to episode 130 of Imperfect Heroes Insights into Parenting, the perfect podcast for imperfect parents looking to find joy in their experience of raising children in an imperfect world. And I'm your host, DJ Stead. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Imperfect Heroes, where we explore the extraordinary world of parenting. And I am DJ Stets, and I am your go-to early childhood specialist, podcaster, author, and parent coach. And so before we get started today, such an exciting episode, I can't stand it. But I want to let you know that uh, up until January 1st, I have got a special little gift for you because I know that we do a ton of traveling with our kids during the holidays. And so I have a special a little workshop that uh, has a lot of downloads. We have uh, scavenger hunts and we have Are We There Yet maps and we have travel checklists to make sure that you don't forget anything. It's a little hour long workshop on how to travel with our kids with by air or by road <laughs> and things that we can do to make traveling more fun and easier for everybody, including the parents and the kids. And so I usually, it's just, it's not really that expensive. It's usually $25, but if you go on the website and um, at checkout, use the coupon code Christmas, you're going to get it for free. So uh, that just might help you with some of your travels as we go. So uh, have fun with that. And right now, though, I am so excited to introduce our special guest for today. And it is none other than the real, the original Santa Claus. Yay! Santa, how are you doing today? Oh, DJ, I'm fine. Thank you. Really well. Oh, how are you? That is so good to hear. So, um, Santa, you're up in the North Pole. Looks like things are nice and foresty behind you. And uh, so it's, uh, what are things like right now up there? Is it windy and cold? Are you getting things ready? Yes, we, we've had a bit of a heat wave recently. It's about minus 40 degrees. But oh, we, cope with, oh, we cope with the heat. Oh, it's all right. Very, very hot. Very hot there for you. Yes. So you're wearing your light jacket today, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> but the elves are very busy. I'm, uh, I'm not doing quite so much just yet. So I've been able to pop out and do some um, visiting of really good children. So some of your listeners may have seen me recently at school or at a mall or. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they might have. They might have. Well, you know, I've been so excited because I knew you were coming on to talk to me pretty soon. And so I have been talking to some of my little friends from around and I have been letting them know that I was going to be talking to Santa. And I said, if you could ask Santa one question, what would your question be? And I've got some really fun questions from some of our uh, listeners and some of my friends and some of my grandkids even. And so they're kind of interesting. I'm sure you've heard all the questions, but they were fun for me. So let's get started right away. Um, Santa, One, qu this first question comes from Sylvan. And Sylvan just turned eight years old on Saturday. And yes, he was very excited. He had a wonderful birthday. And his question was, how do those reindeer fly? It's a mixture of things. They've been bred specially to be quite light boned and oh. use only on Christmas Eve. We're allowed to use Christmas magic and it lets them fly. This part of it is the special breeding, the same as Rudolph's nose. It's 
generations uh -huh. of elf scientists have bred. So they've got this one bioluminescent oh. nose reindeer. So it's, it, it's clever elves, plus a bit of Christmas magic. That is amazing. Sylvan, I'm sure that that's a great answer for you. Well, Sylvan actually has a younger sister who is five years old, and her name is Ingrid, and they live in northern Nevada, and we call her Iggy, but she is a fun little girl, and so she was wondering, though, what do the elves do during the summer? Some of them go on holiday, but the funny thing is, they don't like heat at all. Come the summer, I'm oh. happy to go to Barbados or somewhere and sort of go in yeah. shorts and t-shirts and hope not to be recognised. But a lot of them, mm -hmm. just for a change of scenery, go to the South Pole. And you what? Think, well, you... I know, yeah, but they love it. <laughs> that is funny. So they go on vacation to the South Pole where there's more mm -hmm. snow, right? Absolutely, it's nice and cold down there because, of course, we're up in the north, and so this um, our summer is right. winter down there. And they're, and they're they're like the opposite of yeah. sunbirds; they love the dark and the cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny, and that is cool. Well, and then there's penguins down in the South Pole too. Yeah. They don't go in the North Pole, so maybe they get to have some fun with those penguins down there. I think As they might. Well. Certainly, I know we. Um, yeah. One of the elves was telling me a joke the other day. Their jokes aren't awfully funny. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. What do you call a penguin in Santa's village? And I said, Well, I don't know. I don't know who he is or anything. You know? And he said, Oh, no, you just call him lost. Because <laughs> <laughs> he said, shouldn't be up north. Funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. That is a fun one. That's a fun one. Okay. Our next question comes from Oliver, who lives in Denver. And Oliver is seven years old. And he wanted to know if the elves have to go to school. The young elves do, yes. Um, because we call it Santa's Village, but really it's it's like a small city these days because there's so many mm -hmm. houses we have to go to, so many children. And the elves, you get a community of elves and you wind up with young elves, <laughs> new young elves. That's what happens. And the new young yeah. elves, they have to go to school. So if you like, the, the village has got, it, it's got teachers, it's got um, wow. doctors and nurses it, over in the elf centre. <sighs> as well as what you think of immediately sort of making the toys and wrapping the presents and cleaning out the stables behind the reindeer and prepping all the harness and everything there's a whole like as an infrastructure like you'd have in a in a town in america oh my goodness so there really are dentist elves huh not so much dentists there because they're very, very lucky elves. Again, I don't know if it's breeding, or, but they have teeth that can eat candy canes all year and never get a cavity. I'm no so way. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Absolutely. for sure. Well, I remember when I was a little girl, I saw a TV show about an elf that wanted to be a dentist. And so that's why I asked. But... Maybe it was just a TV show and it was fiction and not real. Well, maybe, maybe he or she got her wish. I don't know. Or maybe. Who well, knows? There are a lot, of, knows? a lot of films and TV shows and they, they've got people who are pretending to me or pretending to be me or pretending to be else. And they, they mm -hmm. really get it wrong. You know? Yeah. But that's fine, isn't it? As long as they're enjoying it. <laughs> right. Right. Well, and it seems like I have a lot of questions about elves. That seems to be a curiosity for my kids. But uh, the next question comes from a little girl, and her name is Isis. And Isis is six years old, and oh, she you. lives in Arizona. But her question was about what elves look like. So she wanted to know, 
if elves look like children or do they look like small grown-ups? They're not like children except for the elf children. <laughs> but grown-up elves, are, they've got the same, same sort of proportions as grown-up people. So they, they look like small people rather than like children dressed up. Ah, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, so my next question comes from a young man named Jack. And Jack is four years old, and he lives in Oregon. And Jack um, was wondering, do, do you, the Santa, or do the elves ever get sick and what happens when they get sick yes i'm not a young man anymore sometimes i get unwell <laughs> uh, and the elves they get they get sick or sometimes they get injured I mean, obviously we have the oh. best health and safety precautions we can but sure there are illnesses that they get never toothache <laughs> but there um, are illnesses that they can catch and then they go across to the elf center to be treated and it, you've got like a hospital because i say it's like a, a little oh, city really. right. so yes they, they can get sick reindeer can get sick um reindeer can get a thing called reindeer flu and that's dreadful oh. it's, it, it's worse than man flu if you can believe that it's really bad oh my there. goodness and fortunately they they tend to get that in the summer so that by the time we get to christmas when i need them at their fighting fit right we don't normally have a problem a few mm -hmm. months back rudolph wasn't at all well and um his nose just faded to brown there was no red in it that's how come you know with rudolph you know when he's not well <laughs> oh my goodness good. yeah but he's fine now he's fine now and he'll He'll be fine if we need him at Christmas, if it's foggy. Oh, thank heavens. Yeah, because we want you to be safe too. And you need that <laughs> nose, don't you? <laughs> Sometimes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, and so my next question actually comes from a little boy in Spain. And his name is Diego, and his family listens to our podcast. And um, they sent in a question. And Diego was wondering, because they um, do, uh, what was it called? The six, the January 6th, they have the three kings come. Yeah. And they leave out carrots for the camels at the windows and so they he was wondering would the reindeer like carrots and do kids sometimes leave carrots out for reindeers or do they ever get treats because i know they leave cookies for santa sometimes yes a lot of children leave carrots for reindeer um is again it's a clever idea of the elves because as our journeys got bigger and bigger and the more and more places to go yeah. We couldn't keep going back home for the reindeer to refuel, fill up. And so oh. one of you said, what if we could get the very nicest, the very kindest children, check the nicest and get some of them to leave carrots for the reindeer? And I said, but what about me? And they said, well, maybe you could have milk and cookies. And I thought, what a great idea. So the thing is, the reindeer in lots of places have carrots. But can I... Can I ask your, the children that listen one special favour? Oh, yes. Thank you. Children, would you ask your grown-ups, if you're leaving a carrot, can they chop it up into eight pieces? That way the reindeer oh. won't argue over whose turn it is. But if it's foggy, can we have nine pieces because of Rudolph? Thank you. That is such a great idea. Now, I've been wondering. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, it was dreadful, dreadful. Oh, we, we don't want the reindeers to yeah. argue. We don't, no, no. Now, that made me think of a question, though, that mm -hmm. they didn't answer is, is it better to leave the carrots, 
like up on the rooftop or should they leave them on the lawn or by a windowsill? Where's the best place to leave carrots for the reindeer? The alien truly was ever easiest for the grown-ups because I can take uh-huh. them out to the reindeer. If, if they're indoors on a plate oh. or something, I can, I can just gather them up and take them out. Or if it's only one carrot, I can take it out and say, now I think it's your turn and try to get the board <laughs> argument. Um, it's very difficult for uh, people to get up onto the roof to leave, or it can yeah. be. Very so that's probably easiest. Um, putting stuff on the lawn might be awkward because you might get you know, rats and mice and crit- critters just um, taking it away, and then we get more grumpy reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> and fat rats. <laughs> and indeed fat rats, yes. So that's a great idea is maybe have them right by your cookies with yep, leave out some cookies for you. That's a great idea. I'm glad I asked. That just made me think of a question on my own. So mm-hmm. that's a that's a fun one. Okay. So now this question came from a little girl in Wisconsin and mm-hmm. she is 3 years old. And she, her name is Andine, which is a very unusual name. But she asked, what is the name of Mrs. Santa Claus? Well, a long time ago, when we were both a lot younger, <laughs> I nearly always was called Father Christmas, and she was called yes. Mother Christmas. And some people thought her name was Holly or Carol. It was actually Mary, and she was Merry Christmas. Oh, I like that. That's so nice. Yeah, I, I, when she asked me, I said, I don't know. I have never heard of her name. She's just always been Mrs. Mrs. Santa to me. <laughs> yeah, that was. But I thought that was a cute question from a sweet little three-year-old with a an interesting She's name herself. Question. Sorry. She's the what? Oh, she's the brains of the operation? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Basically, I'm just the driver. They don't even let uh, me make many toys anymore. It's, uh, I oh think with my. all the new toys, the mechanical toys and the computer toys, I'm, I yeah. love making a wooden rocking horse or a wooden train, <laughs> but there's not quite the demand that they used to be. And so it's more yeah. stuff that you're also really good at with circuit boards and oh, oh. I don't know. I, I'm not good for circuit training or anything. So no circuit circuit boards. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting when you said that she is the brains of the operation. Mm. And so that kind of makes me wonder what kind of things does Mrs. Santa Claus do then? Well, she worked with the elves in developing um, the genetics program. Let's get us the, the better render. <sighs> Uh, she was the one who said, no, don't even try it with elephants, because I wondered at first, would elephants oh. work? And said, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and she, she does a thing that she calls logistics. And she works out ah. where we go when and make sure that we get everything done at the right mm-hmm. time in the right place. And that's why I say she's mm-hmm. really the brains. I'm, I'm, I'm not even much of a toy maker anymore, but I am the driver and the delivery ah. guy. And if you like, I'm front of house and she's sort of backstage staff. Sounds like a big job, though, a lot of work. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. But, but it's wonderful because it's wonderful to work with the person you love, isn't it? <laughs> so. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And that's nice when you when you have that. Um, OK, so the next question comes from Ethan. And Ethan is from Littleton, Colorado, which is right by Denver. And Ethan was wondering, because he gets in arguments with his brothers sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so he was wondering, how do I know if I'm on the naughty list? And Ethan's, by the way, Ethan is six years old. So he was worried about if he's on the naughty list, because Sometimes he and his big brother will get in arguments. I I would say this, Ethan, 
it's very, very hard for a child to go onto the naughty list. I don't really keep up a naughty list. Um, the worst that can happen is that you're not strongly on the nice list. And oh. the way to make sure you stay on the nice list, if you get on it, if you think you might not be, but stay on it, is be kind. Always be kind. Um, as a little, no, he's not even a little boy anymore. He's a, a man now who's, who is now the Dalai Lama, some sort of religious thing. Oh, and he okay. says, yeah. be kind whenever it's possible. It's always possible. So that's what I look for in, in children and in grown-ups. Try to be kind and be kind. <laughs> if you yeah. get a choice, be kind or be right, be kind. Yeah. And you're more or less guaranteed a place. And sometimes, it's an I do know big brothers can really get you upset and really lead you into yeah. an argument. But try to be kind. Yeah. I like that. And I know it's hard to be kind sometimes when big brothers sometimes don't want to play with you or um, maybe they uh, took one, some of your toys, right? Or they won't let you have your turn on maybe the iPad or something. And so it's hard to stay kind when you feel like you're not being treated fairly. That's not fair, right? Absolutely. And, yeah. yeah. So sometimes, you know, what can we do? Maybe we just have to take a deep breath or use the timer maybe. What, what can he do, do yeah. you think? Well, I, I think the, the breathing idea is very good because if you're beginning to get cross, if you stop and you take a full breath and then a bit extra and then oh, sigh it out, Push your tummy out. It's, it's harder for some people than others, but I've got a great big one so I can really get a big breath. Oh, you do that for a couple of minutes. You can't be angry. You can't be cross. Yeah. That's what I'd recommend. Yeah. I like that. I like that. And so, um, let me see. Where am I now? It's with Ethan. Oh. So this question is from Charlie and Charlie lives in Las Vegas and um, Charlie is seven years old and he said that their house does not have a fireplace because it's too hot in Las Vegas for yeah. a fireplace. And yeah. so how do you come in the houses that don't have a fireplace? Well, what I have to do is clear with the grown-ups that on Christmas Eve and only on Christmas Eve, I can use a magic key to let me in. What? You can't see it, can you? Anyone who can see my magic key is definitely on my nice list. Oh! <gasps> People are not, just can't see it. But if you can, you're on the nice list. And that's how I do. And to be honest, as I'm getting older, sometimes, even if there's a house with a chimney and a fireplace, mm -hmm. I'll say to the grown ups, Do you mind, especially if it's a fairly narrow chimney, do you mind if I actually use my magic key, even though I don't really need to? It's just a lot easier. Is that yeah. a bit lazy of me? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> no, no. Because sometimes things get harder, you know, when when people get older. And I think that one of the things that kids can do to help them remember to be kind is to notice when people who are older might need a little extra help or might need a little extra time to do something. And so if they have grandmas or grandpas that you know, can't run outside like they want to. Because I promise your grandmas and grandpas want to run with you. But their bodies are getting older and they just can't. So when you can remember to be kind to them, you know, and remember Santa is getting older too. 
I mean, how long have you been around, Santa? I hate that question. A long, long <laughs> time. <laughs> Until last year, I used to say to children that I met in England, when they said, how old are you? I would say, older than the Queen. And they go, oh, older than the Queen, because she was very old. And I'm yes, yes. much, much older than her. And I, I've lost that reference point now. I have to say older than the king. And he's, I think he's only about 100. He's, he's a youngster. But yeah. well, no, he might be even less than that. I think he might be in his 70s yeah. or something. Just, just a boy. Yeah. yeah. Just a boy. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. <clears throat> and so, and now you mentioned England. And I've got, let me see. Yes. So I have a little boy named Carl who lives in Harwoden, which is in Wales. Um, oh. And the thing with Wales is they can spell better than they say. So you can look at what they've written and <laughs> it doesn't sound anything like they've written. Like it. No. In fact, I have been working on learning some Welsh because I have Welsh heritage. And it's hard. <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes. But anyway. I only know two he, words of Welsh. Oh, what, what what words do you know, Santa? Nadolich Llawen. Nadolich Llawen. What what the, is that Merry Christmas? It is. Yes, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> it made sense. It made sense. <laughs> well, I've learned Diloch, which is thank you. <laughs> And so that's a that's, very useful thing to know. Yes, yes. People who say thank you are wonderful people. <laughs> yes. Well, he was very concerned. Um, he had heard that uh, you had an angry elf named Grumpus, Krampus, something, and that if yes. the kids were naughty, that um he would take away their presents mm -hmm. or leave them um coal and so yeah. he was a little worried about Krumpus coming into his house and if he would um be hurt like he was worried he said will Krumpus hurt me or take my presents yeah the thing with Krampus which I think is who he's talking about Krampus mm -hmm. it's just made up it's a German tradition of this sort of evil creature that is sort of the, the counterpoint of me, the counterpoint of Santa is, and it's just made up. I think I might've been the Brothers Grimm or someone oh. a while back made up this creature and this story grew. Um, and there, you can reassure, sorry, what, I, I've forgotten already. What was the little boy's name? It was um, uh, Carl. Carl. So, Carl, you don't need to worry. There isn't any such thing as Krampus. It's just a story. A lot of people believe it, but it's not true. Um, and if I'm leaving you a present, I wouldn't let someone else come and steal it, would I? No, no. But he, he seemed worried uh, I hope that's about really that. And I don't know how he heard about it. But, and I didn't even know how to say the name with Krampus or Grumpus or whatever. But... Um, but he said he'd heard about him and and was worried. So you're saying he's not even real? No, he's just made up. You, I think there are again there are films about him, so or films with him in. So it might be like that. It might, yeah. But maybe that's where he heard of him. Yeah. So well, I'm glad to hear that he's not real. Mm. Um, and I'm glad to hear that Santa. If, if you were real, you wouldn't be hanging out with someone like that, I don't think. You would make better friend choices, I think. Absolutely, yeah. He's, yeah. If he was real, that would be awful. <laughs> I know, it would be so scary and sad oh. and all of those things. Yeah. But maybe, I wonder, you, you've heard of the Grinch, right? Yes. Again, that's just made up. Just made yes, up. he's just a. Maybe he was based on. They were based on each other or something, but they're just a story. Maybe, maybe. Although the Grinch is green, isn't he in the stories? Yes, I yes. I don't think Grinch is green. 
It might be. Yeah. I suppose it, I don't I suppose know. It on who's telling the story? It can be. Why not? <laughs> it's just something made exactly. Up. <laughs> He's just part of someone's imagination. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. And so then, here. Let me go back to over here. Um. Oh. So, Alice, who lives in Connecticut, and Alice is four years old. She wanted to know who is your favorite elf. <laughs> Imagine if someone asked you who is your favorite child. You'd have to say, mm -hmm. I love them all the same. And I'd have to say that even if Jingleberry, well, I don't have a favorite elf, but if I did, it would be Jingleberry. Because ah. she's such Jingleberry? Yeah. Do you know Jingleberry? Jingle. I don't. Tell me about Jingleberry. She's such fun. She's one of the teachers. Um, She's actually been on maternity leave because she's had triplets. She had three little baby oh. elves. Wow. And, uh, but she's so happy all the time. And oh, she's just lovely. She's like the ideal elf in many ways. Oh, but so she's happy say, all the time. Have, I don't have any favorites. But if I yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> it would be it's Jingleberry. Like, I would write her name yeah, down. I mean, yeah, you can't have a I want to remember yet. her. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I hear things that are new and I want to remember them or I hear a new name, one of the things that I do is I write them down. So then I have it here and it helps me remember. Um, and so, yeah, maybe we'll see if we can um, do something fun for Jingleberry on Christmas Eve. At our mm. house. Well, she That's that. kind of fun. Yes. Yes. And and so, in fact, Alice has an older brother named Samuel. And uh, he was wondering if you had a favorite Christmas song. I have a least favorite Christmas song about when Santa oh. got stuck in the chimney. I mean, I, I don't <laughs> like much of it. No. I don't like that song much at all. No. Um, I don't really have a favourite. I think one of the favourites we have is um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, because that's, that's quite fun. Oh, that there is a sound fun one. in the middle, but it comes, comes away in the end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I always felt sad that at first that Rudolph didn't have any friends, but I'm glad they came around, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not nice to laugh at people and call them names, and it's something they shouldn't have no. done. But I did say, didn't I? Yeah. Sometimes they can be, and yeah, that's their nature, I'm afraid. Because they're normally very, very sweet little animals, the reindeer. Yeah, well, and we all have bad days, fun. don't we? We do, <laughs> we do, and we can only always make things better by turning it around. And yeah. so, if the um, reindeer were having a bad day and they were being kind of mean to Rudolph, they can always say, I'm sorry, and come join our games, and they can turn it around, right? And Absolutely. just like the kids, the kids can do that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun thing. Oh, here is, I only have about three more. So we're running, <laughs> we're running out. The children have done really well. They've come up with some great questions. They're so clever. They have kind of, haven't they? So um, Sarah lives in uh, California, and she was wondering if you ever get a Christmas present. Who gives you Christmas presents? <laughs> That's a lovely question. I do. Um, my wife gives me a present. Sometimes the elves give me a present, um, but sometimes when I'm going around, people leave presents for me, and that's really oh. nice. And, and next week, I'm I can't remember where it is. Is it called Canada? Yes, Canada. I'm at a, oh. a I'm at a bookshop, and it's we're doing a reverse Santa, where instead of me giving presents, people will come and bring presents to me to give to children who aren't going to have a good Christmas otherwise. So 
Aww. I think that was the you know, idea, this reverse Santa. So I'll come and collect presents instead of giving them away, but then give them away. <laughs> That's so nice. I'm looking I like to. that. Yeah. Well, and that those are some kind things that that kids can do mm -hmm. on their own too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they can look at maybe some of their toys and if they have toys that are really not, you don't want to give away yucky toys, but but if you have some really nice toys and you can give them to children who maybe are living in a shelter or um, are having a struggle uh, mm -hmm. and, and so they have something nice, that's a kind thing for children to do. It is. It is. And it's a, yeah. it's a kind thing for the grown-ups to organize for them as well. Because yeah. It could be hard for, a, you know, say you're six and you say, yeah, I don't need this toy from when mm -hmm. I was four. Well, mm -hmm. when you're six, you don't necessarily know how you can get it to anyone. But if you say to your grown-up, I don't need this toy, can we sort it out? The grown-ups can help. Yeah. Yeah, grown-ups are good at helping with that, right? And, and and, but if you have a great people. idea, if kids have a great idea, they can ask grown-ups to help them. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And so I have uh, the, uh, Keyshawn, and he's actually a little boy that we know. He goes to church with me. Oh. And Keyshawn just turned six. And he wanted to know if you have any kids. I do, but they're all grown up now. <laughs> oh. and we have grandchildren. I'm talking about the elves and more and more elves. It's, it's quite a, quite a yeah. big Santa Claus family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's with a I'll few bet. of us. And when they were small children, it, I had to be very, it was very hard not to spoil them because you know what it's like when you're a grown up a parent you want your children to have everything and it's not always best for them and sometimes you have to think well I'm a grown up and I'll decide and I mean I hear this quite a lot now from grown ups where children who are quite too young ask for the new iPhone or some, mm. some things which they're not really ready for or a BB gun when they're perhaps five or six mm. and I can understand that it's really tempting to say yes, but sometimes it's, you know, I'm sorry, I don't want to come across like a, a, a Krampus, <laughs> but sometimes it's best to say no and, and not yet. Yeah, yeah. And so I think that might be a hard thing as Santa to, sometimes you do have to say not yet, or, you know, that's not something that would work well for your family, right? Yeah. And so, or sometimes, um, maybe do you have kids that ask you for something like, um, maybe their mommy is sick or something and they want you to make her better. And that's maybe something you can't do. And yeah. so how is that when someone asks you that kind of a question? What you have to say is, I can't do that. I haven't got that kind of magic. Yeah, but we'll think about it and we'll remember you in the, our prayers and see if that will work. Nice. And yeah, you know, you, you can't raise false hopes. It, it wouldn't be fair. Yeah. No. I, I, sometimes what I have had with children is not that in particular, but like a few years back, I was um, being the Santa at a party for the visually challenged children, blind children. Oh, wow. And they, they would be coming up to me and saying, you know, what they wanted for Christmas. And a lot of them, you know, they're just ordinary children. They wanted exactly the same as other children wanted. I think back then sure. it was all you know, teenage mutant ninja turtles. And apparently they've come <laughs> back. They're, they're big again. Yes, they but are. When they were around the first time. And one little girl that came up to me and I said, I'm, I'm, you know, I haven't had a list from you or anything, so can you tell me what you'd like for Christmas? And she said, well, I don't want a Christmas wish, Santa. I've got everything in the world. 
can you take oh. my wish and give it to a little boy or a little girl who hasn't got everything and use my wish for them and that's the thing children are just so kind and that i i was sort of blown away with that she's such a lovely thing to yeah. do yeah i love that 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 is a tender tender sweet thing what a good child that is i'll bet that kiddo was on the top of the good list huh <laughs> Well, she wasn't in the bottom. Let's say that she was no, yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. What a sweet thing. Okay, and the last question mm -hmm. that I have for us today is from uh, Jonathan, and Jonathan lives in Boise, Idaho, and Jonathan was asking, "What do you like?" better peppermint ice cream or chocolate uh hot cocoa well i love hot cocoa and i love peppermint ice cream but have you ever had a hot cocoa with some peppermint ice cream in it <gasps> you thought that you've got the chocolate and the peppermint and it's still hot but then you get little cold ice so that would be my recommendation. If you have, don't choose, take both. <laughs> but then I, I, I do tend to be a bit greedy. As you may notice from the number of mince pies and cookies I have. I think I've got to try that this Christmas. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you for your question. You've just given me a new idea. <laughs> I would well have done, never Jonathan. thought of that. <laughs> Well done. Well done, Jonathan. Now, I know that there are lots of children who probably have a lot more questions for you and, and would love to see some of the things that you do. Is there a way that parents and children can, can learn more about you and maybe ask questions? Where would yes. they go? Yep. Um, the elves have been encouraging me a bit. This advent so from the first of december i'm going to have my own podcast <laughs> i'm quite excited because i've I, I haven't done a pod well other than guessing i haven't done a podcast before <laughs> and it's called santa's village voice and the, the elves tell Ooh. me you can hear it wherever you normally listen to your podcasts so if you're on what is it, apple or google or amazon or wherever apparently it's mm -hmm. i'm going to show off now i know this term it's hosted <laughs> it's hosted <laughs> on buzzsprout so you can get it on buzzsprout but you can get it in all you can listen to it in all these other places um so yes that's going to be good so if they if, if they i mean would it be all right the questions you've asked today i i could perhaps share the answers the questions and the answers on the podcast so that Children, you know, because that that would be two two places where children might hear the questions and the answers on here and on my podcast. Is that okay? Oh, <laughs> I'm sure the kids would love to hear um, their questions and their names being on Santa's podcast. Absolutely, I hope so. <laughs> oh yes, that would be wonderful. And so, kiddos and parents, if uh you didn't have a pen to write that down right away we're going to put that information in the show notes and so you can just pop down on the show notes and click and we'll just have the link it'll be one click away and and you can go to the podcast and um and uh get more of more of santa what a fun thing to do now santa I mm -hmm. have a tradition, you know, Christmas traditions are a lot of fun, but there are a lot of traditions that are all year round and they are not part of Christmas so much. Mm -hmm. One of my traditions is at the end of every podcast, I ask my guests because we know there are no perfect parents. So children, your parents are not perfect. And I know that it's easy to get upset once in a while, but Parents are trying their very hardest and they are going to make mistakes sometimes, just like children make mistakes sometimes. 
And so we need to be very patient with them because they're trying. But Santa, do you have any ideas of what might make a successful parent? Yes, I do. <laughs> that probably doesn't surprise you at all. Not at all. I, I, I can certainly tell you the evidence of a successful parent. Mm. The evidence of a successful parent is a child who is kind. A child who you know would be on my nicest even if I was picky. Um, and I think the way that that happens is that the parents accept that just as they're imperfect, the children are imperfect, but just as they'll do the best they can, the children will do the best they can. And you should always, always be proud of your children because they mm -hmm. are doing a wonderful job and a hard job. And from what I've seen, it seems to get harder and harder. Every decade there's harder being a child growing up. So my tip to parents is look at your children, see how wonderful they are, treat them kindly and be proud of them. They're your children. Be proud. I love that so much. You are right on, spot on. Thank you, Santa, so much. And maybe you can come back next year and we can uh, collect questions all year long and we can have more questions for you next year. This can become one of our traditions. I'd love to have that. Um, yeah, and so, oh, that would be lovely. So everyone, I want you to, to remember that if you are traveling with your kids this year, go ahead and take advantage of that um, uh, traveling with kids that we have at the website, which is www.littleheartsacademyusa.com. And if you need some ideas or some help with how to manage things through the holidays or just manage things, I would love to be there to help you. It just warms my heart to talk to parents about their kids and to help them come up with some fun and energetic ideas to find joy in raising their kids. And so we'll be back uh actually i won't be back next week because it'll be christmas and so it will be back on new year's day but so until then merry christmas to everybody i hope that you have just the sweetest time understanding and bringing in the reason for the season and honoring uh our lord and savior and uh, having fun and uh enjoying uh, the whole spirit of kindness and of giving and of loving one another. And so until next time we meet, let's find joy in parenting. Bye, guys. Bye, Santa. Thanks for coming. Bye, DJ. Bye, children. Bye, grown-ups.